Welcome again to another episode of Doodling Through Education. Today, we are going to talk about space missions, and we're going to map out the path that we took as humans to the moon and what NASA did after that and what they're doing now. So it should be a really fun episode. Um, I really enjoyed these last couple weeks learning about space. Um, and I'm a little sad that we won't be talking about space anymore um, for the next coming weeks, but that's okay because there's all kinds of fun and interesting scientific concepts that we'll touch on instead. But while it lasts, let's go ahead and jump right in and talk about these space missions. The first space missions that we will talk about today are the Mercury Space mis Missions. This program ran from 1958 to 1963. It was known as being the first manned space program and overall it had six official flights. There were three main goals of this program, and they were number one, to orbit a manned spacecraft around the Earth, number two, to study man's ability to function in space and the effects that space has on man, and lastly, to recover both man and spacecraft safely. The first U.S. spaceship was a cone-shaped one-man capsule with a cylinder mounted on top. Its dimensions were 6 feet 10 inches long, 6 feet 2 and a half inches in diameter, and 19 feet 2 inches for the escape tower which was fastened to the cylinder of the capsule. Then the blunt end was covered with a heat shield to protect it against the 3,000 degree heat of entry into the atmosphere. The series began with a suborbital flight about three weeks after the Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the first human in space. There were some notable missions in this program, and one was when Alan B. Shepard Jr. rode a Mercury space capsule dubbed Freedom 7 on a 302 mile flight of 15 minutes, attaining a maximum altitude of 116 miles. The first US crewed flight in orbit was that of the Friendship 7, commanded by John H. Glenn Jr., and it was launched on February 20th, 1962. It successfully completed three orbits and landed in the Atlantic Ocean near the Bahamas. The last Mercury flight was that of Faith 7, and it was also the longest. It was launched on May 15, 1963, and it carried L. Gordon Cooper Jr. on 22 orbits before its landing and successful recovery 34 hours and 20 minutes later. Let's move on to the next space mission program, and it was titled The Gemini Missions. This program ran from 1962 to 1966. These missions were crucial in learning and advancing the same technologies that eventually got humans to the moon. The main objectives of these missions were to study the effects that long flights had on astronauts' bodies. So remember in the last missions, they just wanted to see what would what would happen to people? This was specifically to study the long flights and the effects that it had um, on astronauts' bodies in those long flights. Another objective was to perfect 
the re-entry process and then also to refine the docking process as well as landings. And then lastly, another objective was to test the equipment and skills for having astronauts safely go on spacewalks, which meant leaving a spaceship and going into open space with a tether attached to them. Due to the advancements of all these important processes, these missions are often referred to as the bridge to the moon. Similar in design to the Mercury capsule, but much larger, the new Gemini spacecraft was designed to carry two astronauts into Earth orbit to test long duration flight, rendezvous and docking, and other techniques needed for journeys to the moon. Mercury astronaut Gus Grissom and John Young flew the first manned mission, Gemini 3, which launched March 23, 1965. Grissom playfully dubbed the capsule Molly Brown, referring to both a survivor of the sinking of the Titanic and his Mercury capsule, which filled with water and sank in the Atlantic after splashdown. On June 3, 1965, Gemini 4 astronaut Edward H. White II became the first American to step outside his spacecraft and let go, effectively setting himself adrift in the zero gravity of space. For 23 minutes, White floated and maneuvered himself around the spacecraft, logging 6,000 500 miles during his orbital stroll. White was attached to the spacecraft by a 20-foot tethered cord. In his right hand, he carried what was called a handheld self-maneuvering unit, or an HHSMU, which he used to move above the weightless environment of space. Gemini 8 made the first successful docking in space, linking up with the Agena target vehicle. Docking spacecraft was an essential element of NASA's plan to go to the moon. Unfortunately, during the docking maneuvers, one of the Gemini capsule's thrusters short-circuited and started to fire continuously. This sent the docked spacecraft into a dangerous spin. The crew were able to undock the capsule and then used their re-entry thrusters to regain control, and nobody was hurt, but safety rules about using the re-entry thrusters forced them into an early landing from that mission. Now, let's talk about the next series of missions, and the next space missions are well known around the world, and they are the Apollo space missions. Project Apollo's goals went beyond landing Americans on the moon and returning them safely to Earth, although this was one of their goals. They also included establishing the technology to meet other national interests in space, achieving preeminence in space for the United States, carrying out a program of scientific exploration of the moon, and then, on July 20th, 1969, the Apollo 11 crew successfully completed the national goal set by President John F. Kennedy eight years prior to perform a crewed lunar landing and safely return to Earth. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed their Apollo lunar module and walked on the lunar surface for the first time in mankind. Armstrong and Aldrin spent 21 hours and 36 minutes on the moon's surface while Michael Collins remained in lunar orbit in the command and service module, which can be abbreviated CSM. All three then landed safely on Earth in the Pacific Ocean on July 24th. 
The remaining Apollo missions carried out extensive exploration of the lunar surface, which is the moon's surface. They collected 842 pounds of moon rocks and installed many instruments for scientific re research, such as the solar wind experiment and the seismographic measurements of the lunar surface. Beginning with Apollo 15, astronauts drove a lunar rover on the moon. And then in the Apollo 17 mission, the final flight of the program took place in December of 1972. In total, 12 American astronauts walked on the moon during the six successful lunar landing missions of the Apollo program. And last to talk about are the Space Shuttle missions that started in 1981 and formally ended in 2011. The Space Shuttle was the first reusable spacecraft and was primarily used to construct and maintain the International Space Station. The Space Shuttle fleet included five space shuttles named Columbia, Challenger, Discovery, Atlantis, and Endeavor. Starting with Columbia and continuing with Challenger, Discovery, Atlantis, and Endeavor, these spacecrafts have carried people into orbit repeatedly, launched, recovered, and repaired satellites, conducted cutting-edge research, and built the largest structure in space you guessed it, the International Space Station. The final space shuttle mission, STS-135, ended July 21st, 2011, when Atlantis rolled to a stop at its home port, which was NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Before we go, it is important to note that NASA is currently working on a space mission called Orion. The purpose of these missions will be to send humans to Mars to study it for scientific purposes. There are also plans within this mission to send humans to a nearby asteroid as well. It is said that the asteroid mission could be as soon as the year 2025, and the Mars missions could potentially take place sometime in the 2030s. What an awe-inspiring time to be alive. And with that, I hope you enjoyed learning about these space missions. I hope they inspired you um, to go and learn more about them this week. Continue learning as much as you can, as often as you can. And on that note, remember to be kind, follow God's will, and take care. Bye.